As well as leaving a massive looming shadow over the geopolitical situation that we live with today, the Cold War era left a lot of physical junk scattered all across the world. The former USSR was especially fond of building massive concrete structures and enormous secret facilities all over the show, and after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, many of these places were simply left behind. So for your viewing pleasure today, we have the 20 Creepiest Abandoned Soviet Era Places. Enjoy! Number 20. Pripyat, Ukraine In 1986, the Chernobyl nuclear reactor suffered a catastrophic failure and radioactive material from the disaster spread over a wide area around the site. Following the evacuation and cleanup of the place, an official exclusion zone, known as the Chernobyl Nuclear Power Plant Zone of Alienation, would be established. This zone was initially a 30-kilometer radius from the power plant where the meltdown took place, but since has expanded to a wider area of Ukraine in the time that's passed since the event. This is the old town square, the house of culture. The exclusion zone now covers an area of about 1,000 square miles. This is the immediate surroundings of the power plant itself, which is where the radioactive contamination is at its highest. Here, public access is highly restricted. There are several different administrators that are responsible for the various zones and such like in the area around Chernobyl. These different parts have various requirements, and this is still subject to change. As the radioactivity is slowly declining in further reaches of the exclusion zone, there are plans to redraw the restrictions and reassess the boundaries as time goes on. Although the likelihood of drawing a large crowd to the area seems fairly limited, probably for a couple of thousands years anyway. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Buzludza Monument, Bulgaria On a high and remote peak in the mountains of Bulgaria, there stands a strange abandoned monument. This peak was actually the site of a fierce and deadly battle in 1868 between the Bulgarians and the Turks, and it was then in 1891 that a gaggle of socialists met up there to plan the future of the country, and that is what this weird monument was erected to honor. During the height of the Soviet Union's power, the socialist government in Bulgaria had built the monument. Work began on it in 1974, and it was undertaken by the Bulgarian army with the assistance of a whole herd of artisans. It's the perfect representation of a Soviet monument design. It's a stark and modernist, gray and severe-looking thing, and in a really weird place. The saucer-shaped monument and its accompanying red star emblazoned monolith are testament to the determination to put massive erections up all over the place. Despite the remote location, the desire to show dominance even at the top of a random Bulgarian mountain, and although it has been vandalized and is well past its A-Day, the monument is indeed still there. Number 18. Haldiski, Estonia Modern-day Estonia was once part of the Soviet Union, and there are actually many leftovers from that era scattered all about the landscape. One of the larger and more spooky of the remains is that of the former Soviet military town of Paldiski. Paldiski is located about 50 kilometers to the west of Tallinn, along the limestone cliffs of the Estonian coastline. It was once a nuclear submarine training base for the Soviet Navy, but these days, it's just a crumbling heap of fairly bleak abandoned buildings and a leftover lighthouse. Once home to 16,000 troops, the base was well guarded and protected from prying eyes, until finally completely closing down in 1994. It was actually the largest naval base of the sort in the whole of the USSR for a time, so it was a pretty big operation, and what remains is a fairly hefty amount of concrete and wire. It's a bleak-looking reminder of a very different era in this part of the world. In modern times, Paul Disky is still home to a few thousand people. It features grocery stores, cafes, and some housing blocks that are all still in use as well as some new buildings. It's now a city that's looking towards the future and finally leaving behind the Soviet stuff of its past. Number 17. Duga Radar, Ukraine 
As you probably know, the Cold War was a period of time in which the USSR and the United States spent a whole lot of time, money, and effort in the realm of military and defense. The heightened fear of nuclear proliferation meant that the use of defense systems and early warning detection was at the top of the list for both superpowers. In the USSR, one of the most important systems in their defense strategy was this one. This is the Over the Horizon, or OTH radar system, known as a Duga. It was positioned in two strategic places, one in present-day Ukraine and the other in eastern Siberia in present-day Russia. The Duga system was a powerful early warning missile defense radar network. This one was positioned near Chernobyl, and its enormous structure could be seen from miles around. It has the appearance of a massive wall, but as you get closer, it's possible to see that it's actually constructed of hundreds of turbines and antenna. It measures 492 feet tall and is almost 2,300 feet wide. That's an imposing size, however you look at it. And there it remains, like many relics of the Cold War, just wasting away and gradually decaying within the exclusion zone of the Chernobyl disaster. Number 16. Semi-Palantinsk Polygon, Kazakhstan During the Cold War, there were a lot of so-called closed-off cities inside the Soviet Union. These places were kept secret, and the goings-on within their boundaries were known only to the very highest-ranking members of the Politburo. The knowledge of the existence of many of these closed cities was extremely limited, and they didn't even appear on the maps. One of these closed cities was Semipolintinsk, now known today as an easier-to-pronounce semi in Kazakhstan. Whereas many of the secret locations that had been of strategic importance for the military were used for mining, some had very dark secrets indeed, and semi was concealing some of the worst atrocities of the era. The Polygon was actually the Soviet Union's main nuclear testing site, and during its time, the USSR conducted 456 nuclear tests there. Between 1949 and 1989, they experienced 340 underground detonations and 116 atmospheric ones. That, it turns out, was a total of more than 2,500 Hiroshima bombs and it's too much to even begin to comprehend. The thing is, though, the nuclear test site was not the only one in the Soviet Union, but it was the only one that positioned close to residential areas. All of these nuclear tests were carried out without any concern for the health and welfare of the 200,000 people who lived in the area. They were never evacuated or even warned about the explosions. The people very quickly began to suffer terrible health consequences as cancer rates would soar and birth defects became alarmingly common. The people were forced to stay and suffer, as the rules of a closed city meant that they couldn't leave the area. Shockingly, the effects have continued until the present day, and people in the region are still suffering from the catastrophic impact that the nuclear testing had on their environment. Number 15. Katakchan, Russia Next up, we have this creepy spot in Siberia. This is Katakchan. It was once a mining town in the USSR, but these days it's utterly deserted, and frankly, you can kind of understand why. The place was built in the 1930s by prisoners in the Russian Gulag for the purposes of housing the population of workers in the coal mines of the region. The peak population of the city sat at about 10,000 in 1986, but it dwindled as the collapse of the Soviet Union hit the coal industry, and people began to leave throughout the 90s until it was finally, and quite recently, abandoned. Because the place is so remote, it's remained largely as it was left, many places still containing furniture, posters still hang on the walls, and there are still cars left broken down in garages. It's an eerie place full of a lot of relics that are lost to time. Number 14. Kopachi, Ukraine When the Chernobyl nuclear power plant suffered a catastrophic disaster, a massive area was contaminated, and that included this small village. Kopachi in Ukraine was just a couple of miles to the south of the nuclear power plant at Chernobyl. When the meltdown took place, it was home to around about a thousand people of the time. All the villagers would be evacuated, and the wooden buildings were pulled down the remains then buried underground. Now this is actually a really terrible idea, as all of that radiation that contaminated the buildings and the topsoil were then able to penetrate deeper and get washed into the water table. 
Today, all that remains of the spooky village of Kopachi is the brick-built kindergarten and war memorial. The images of inside the abandoned kindergarten are especially eerie, as all of the things that were left behind are still scattered about, covered in dust, and a reminder of the terrible event and all the lives that were affected by it. Number 13. Pyramiden, Norway Back in the days of the Soviet Union, this Arctic outpost on the Norwegian archipelago of Svalbard, the small town of Pyramiden, was a once a coal mining town that still sports a bust of Lenin in the town square. The town was originally founded by Sweden back in 1910, and they then sold it to the USSR in 1927. The coal mining town would continue to fuel the Soviet Union until it collapsed, and then the town ultimately closed down completely in 1998 and was abandoned. It's literally at the end of the earth, so it sort of makes sense that people wouldn't readily choose to live there. Accessible only by boat or snowmobile, Pyramiden is not technically restricted for visitors, but people are not allowed to go inside the buildings. Oh my God. It is a kind of time capsule, but is under threat of deterioration through weathering, and this has also been exacerbated by vandalism and theft of artifacts. Nowadays, the spooky and isolated place is being rebranded as an interesting tourist destination. It's kept all of the old Soviet stuff and still gets cut off for a good deal of the year, but the town's hotel has undergone a renovation and was reopened in 2013. During the summer months, a population of about six people live in the town, and they run the hotel for the visitors. Number 12. Skrunda 1, Latvia one of the things that the Soviet Union was especially good at was building massive concrete structures in weird places and then filling them up with propaganda. This particular gem is a time capsule in Latvia. Skrunda 1 is the abandoned, previously secret military settlement that was built in 1963 as one of the series of secret cities that the USSR had created for various military stuff. At the peak of its use, the place was home to about 5,000 Soviet troops and this particular installation would be placed here with the main purpose of housing two massive radar systems which were designed to watch for any incoming missiles from Western Europe. This included a lot of buildings with a barracks, admin areas, a school, and a couple of factories, and what remains gives a hint that the place must have been like. Bright murals cover many walls and large uniform department blocks offer a glimpse of that characteristic Soviet style. The place is currently off-limits, but there are plans to reinstate it for military use and potential tourism opportunities. Number 11. Aralsk 7, Kazakhstan The terrifying prospect of germ warfare is demonstrated in this next place. This is an island, and during the height of the Cold War, it was the center of the top-secret Soviet deadly pathogen testing. Located on the Kazakh-Uzbek border, this island, well, it used to be an island anyways, was once surrounded by water and had once been a fishing village with blue lagoons all around. But these days, it's a sorry mess of an abandoned disaster zone. The water has receded and only the dust remains. The rivers that used to feed the lagoon were long ago diverted to water the cotton fields, and now the island has literally poisoned all of the land with its deadly toxins. The mercury levels in the sand here are staggeringly high. All signs of life have departed, and there are the remnants of a testing facility that is one of the most dangerous places on the entire planet. During the 1940s, through until the collapse of the Soviet Union, the island, known as Arosk 7, was turned into and used as a testing facility for biological weapons. During that time, there were several incidents which would cause deadly exposure to hideous viruses. The facility tested many toxic agents from anthrax to smallpox, plague to tularemia, and according to the defectors in the early 1990s, the facility made some of these agents into weapons which were stored on the island. After the fall of the USSR, the site would be abandoned and all the inhabitants evacuated. Many of those deadly toxins were not properly disposed of, and they've been leaking and causing deadly spills in the environment. There have been efforts in recent times to clean up some of those contaminated areas, but seriously though, this is surely the maddest thing. How can you just up and leave a pile of biological weapons to slowly leak? Number 10. Mongolian Air Base Out in the flat, desolate landscape of Mongolia, there's a crumbling heap of concrete and tangled metal that was once the Bayantal Air Base. 
This Soviet base was operational from the 1970s until the 1990s. There are all the remains that we're becoming familiar with as we explore these abandoned relics of the Cold War. There are bits of Soviet insignia, lots and lots of concrete, a lot of austere buildings, and plenty of ghosts. The jewel of the abandoned place is the old MiG-21 jet that has been mounted on a concrete platform as it takes off skywards. This is the real remaining symbol of the military presence in the place, and it is equally haunting and fascinating like a monument to a long-dead regime. Number 9. The Abandoned Red Star Train Graveyard Now, it seems inconceivable that people would just go around littering up the place with old and broken trains, but what do you really do with something so big and immovable when it's no longer useful? It is a sad thought. But perhaps that's why abandoned trains make some of the most haunting and spooky places. This particular place is known as the Red Star Train Graveyard, and it's located near Budapest in Hungary. It contains the rusting remains of more than 100 abandoned trains from many eras in history, and some of them even have some terrible stories to tell. This railway yard was constructed at the beginning of the 20th century as a place to repair trains for the National Railway, but it ultimately became a graveyard for old and forgotten engines and train cars as time went on. The whole area gradually being reclaimed by nature, and although there are several relics from the Soviet era here, they are slowly disappearing as the plant life moves in and takes its place. Number 8. Kerchatov Kazakhstan. This place was the administrative center for the atomic research area known as SIMI. The town of Kerchatov was actually named after the head of the Soviet nuclear program, Igor Kerchatov, and at the peak of its existence, Kerchatov had 40,000 inhabitants. But after the testing facilities and such would be closed down, the people began to leave and the number reduced to about a quarter of that. Although the place is not entirely abandoned, there are areas of it with a distinct ghost town quality, but that could just be a byproduct of all the Soviet architecture. It doesn't age with the extraordinary grace, now does it? The whole entire area has been massively affected by these nuclear tests, and despite the clear dangers of the radiation that must have permeated everything across the region, there are still people who are trying to survive here. It now has a certain appeal to the dark tourist, but beware, you may leave the area somewhat more radioactive than when you arrived. Number 7. Balaklava Soviet Submarine Base Submarines were a really significant feature of the Cold War era aggressions between the superpowers of the United States and the USSR. They were always pointing nuclear weapons at each other and one of the best ways to do that was by using a submarine that could be parked in a nice strategic location, just ready to obliterate the world at the reckless touch of a big red button. And the USSR had a nice place in the Black Sea where they parked all their submarines. That was the Balaklava submarine base adjacent to the city of Sevastopol. Hidden away from the public for decades, the base has now been turned into a naval museum. It's an underground, virtually indestructible, and apparently former top-secret naval base. It's said that the base itself, being deep underground and extremely well-constructed, was able to withstand a nuclear attack. It's buried beneath 400 feet of rock and used to contain enough supplies for the personnel housed there to survive below ground for 30 days. Probably not quite long enough post-nuclear Armageddon, but, you know, what do I know? Number 6. Seri Shagan, Kazakhstan Here we are again in Kazakhstan, where this time we're at an anti-ballistic missile testing range. Oh, such fun! Sari Shagan was another one of those Soviet closed cities, hidden away from public view, and not shown on a map, and definitely up to no good. These closed cities were where the USSR did its top secret shady business after all. This is the only location that they tested their anti-missile weapons. Construction of the testing site began back in 1956, and the area was chosen as it fit the criteria for such a place to be. It was a lowland wooded area with a sparse population, which enjoyed plenty of cloudless days. It sounds nice. Let's go there and blow it all to hell, why don't we? In 1961, they had the first successful testing of the Missile Defense System A when a ballistic missile warhead was hit by it at the site. Then, in the year or so that followed, 
they tried some nuclear explosions at altitudes above the testing site. In the 1990s, like the rest of the former Soviet Union, the place would be decommissioned and largely abandoned. The equipment was then looted and carted off for scrap. However, the site has not been officially cleaned up, and there's all manner of military junk and general contamination that has simply been left to leach into the environment and seemingly available to anyone who might feel like taking it home with them. That seems safe, I'm sure. Number 5. Hera Submarine Base, Estonia When the Hera Submarine Base was built between 1956 and 1958, it was shrouded in secrecy, and the public were all kept well away. It was deliberately built in an isolated position so as to avoid all of those nosy neighbors. This particular naval base was built with a very specific purpose. It was designed for the demagnetization of submarines. This is apparently a complex underwater procedure that would make the submarines less vulnerable to sea mines. The submarine hull is especially magnetic, something to do with the magnetic field of the Earth. So, they'd be sent off here to get their magnetic junk all sorted out. That would then allow them to cross the Baltic Sea without attracting every mine along the way. The place was in operation until the collapse of the USSR in 1991. And after Estonian independence, the people at the base quickly left it behind, dismantling the facility as they went to protect some of the military secrets that it still contained. The buildings were mostly destroyed, and what remains is derelict, although some are still possible to explore. There are discussions about what to do with the crumbling facilities. Some are hoping the space will be turned into a harbor, instead of just being allowed to just crumble down forever. Number 4. Belitz Hellstatten, Germany as if it's not bad enough to be haunted, it's surely much, much worse to be haunted by Nazi ghosts. Belitz Hallstatten Hospital in the southwest of Berlin in Germany is, unluckily for them, haunted with a bunch of naughty dead Nazis. The hospital originally opened in 1898 as a sanitarium for those who were suffering from tuberculosis. It was then used during the First World War as a hospital for soldiers and was actually where Adolf Hitler was treated after he was wounded during a conflict. Then, again, during the Second World War, it would be used as an army hospital. It then became a regular old hospital during the Soviet era until the collapse of communism in the 1990s. The place now sits abandoned in the forest, which adds to the overall creepy vibes of this derelict building. It's undergone various changes since last being used, and some parts have been renovated, while others remain untouched. It's been used as a location for the film's Valkyrie, starring Tom Cruise, and The Pianist, as well as a music video backdrop for Ramstein. Naturally, of course. Number 3. Tallinn, Lenahal, Estonia Back in 1980, Moscow hosted the Summer Olympics, and the sailing events were held in the Soviet-occupied country of Estonia. This is the Lena Hall. It originally went by the name of V.I. Lenin Palace of Culture and Sport, and it was a complex that was built to host the regatta. Commissioned by the Soviet Union, the space had an enormous 5,000-capacity amphitheater, as well as an ice hall, heliport, and seaport. Naturally, the USSR wanted to show off just how good they were at everything, from sports to building massive event spaces. It was, however, put together quite quickly, and the rushed construction became evident in the decades that followed the events of the Olympics. Many of the buildings are now crumbling away and mostly set empty. It's not unusual for a fate of Olympic parks, to be honest, and is certainly not unique to the former Soviet Union. There are abandoned structures and even vast complexes that were specially built to house Olympic events all over the world. They're regularly abandoned not long after the Games take place, often because the running costs are too high, or because despite the promises of regenerating an area, it all comes down to both prestige and money in the end. Number 2. Bakanur Cosmodrome, Kazakhstan In the depths of the desert in Kazakhstan, there are a bunch of leftovers from the Soviet space program. It's an eerie scene that has drawn in explorers and photographers to catch a glimpse of this unique time capsule. 
Inside a colossal hangar, there are two Soviet space shuttles gathering dust, and when the United States produced their own space shuttle, the Soviets were fearful that it could be used as a weapon, and so they built their own. It was based on stolen plans from the United States. Neither of these two shuttles actually ever got into space to fulfill their destiny. One was named Pachika, and it just never got the chance. The other was only a test vehicle and wasn't even designed to fly. They do have the sad look of the last puppies in the pet shop that nobody wants to take home with them, though, don't they? Poor little shuttles, all Soviet and gloomy in an old shed. Anyways, only one shuttle in the Soviet space program had ever made it off the Earth, and that was Buran. But sadly, that shuttle was destroyed during an earthquake that collapsed the hangar in which it was being kept, and it actually killed eight people in the process. This Cosmodrome is a fascinating relic of that Cold War space race and all the crazy efforts that both the superpowers went to in order to dominate beyond Earth's atmosphere. These images are a seldom seen peek behind the curtain of the most secret of programs. Number 1. Old Soviet Radio Station Latvia This is yet another of those crumbling cities that were abandoned in the wake of the collapse of the USSR or this time, we're back in Latvia, in a town called Urbine. This place was another of those closed-off cities, about which we have learned a whole bunch today. This one was purpose-built by the Soviets to accommodate the military personnel, scientists, and other workforce that were required to operate the Radio Astronomy Center, called Little Star. This was a center of espionage with which the essential in all communications in the USSR and beyond were done. It consisted of three radio telescopes and a communications base. When it was constructed, the place was absolutely state-of-the-art. These radio telescopes were able to detect and record radio waves that were transmitted by objects in space. Opened in 1967, the radio station immediately needed an entire town's worth of people just to run it and so the city of Irbine would be created. The town included several of those classic austere concrete apartment blocks, a sports center, a general store, a kindergarten, and an officer's club. The town, although secret and therefore not on any maps and officially non-existent, continued to be home to as many as 3,000 individuals at any given time up until the final years of the Soviet Union. After the fall in 1991, the Russian military remained in the town for a further two years in the handover of the radio technology to the Latvians, who just wanted to use it for research, and the super-paranoid Russians were not trusting that they wouldn't use it to spy. In the end, the Russian military actually dismantled two of the telescopes and left their personnel behind for extra time just to keep an eye on things in the newly independent Latvia. These days, the whole town is a crumbling and deserted relic of that era, Although it had been in decent shape, it was left at the mercy of looters and scavengers who pulled much of it apart for the scrap material. The buildings still stand, as do some of the technologies, albeit in a quite sorry state. Well, that's all from the other side of the Iron Curtain for today. Which of these creepy places captured your imagination? And have you ever visited anywhere like them? Tell me all about it in the comments section below. Check out the other cool things showing up on the screen. And I will see you next time.